In this video, we're going to finish by working on the ears. I created some curves to use with the swept in generator, which will generate a mesh for us. So to get started, let's roll back to an earlier version of the scene. Before I make any curves, I want to create a new polygroup layer. This panel was formerly called Retopo Groups. I'll now double click on the layer and name it accordingly. What I want to do is place a simple plane where I want to draw my curves and place those on top of it. Let's go to the primitives and you can see 3D and 2D primitives are grouped together in a tool group. I'll choose the 2D primitives and I'll choose a simple plane. I can rotate this 90 degrees by clicking on the rotate widget and hitting the space bar. Just enter the numeric value and hit OK. I'll now move it into place. However, I could have checked click to place in the tool options panel in order to place it with one click. Let's turn symmetry off for the time being. And I can hit the enter key and that's going to commit it to this layer, as you see. And in the E panel, I can click on closed spline to bring up the curves panel. You can also access it from the curves menu under activate curves editor. So what I'm going to do is start with a B spline. Actually, I need to move that plane forward just a bit. So I'll click on select all faces on layer, then right click and choose the transform tool. I'll come out of orthographic view by hitting the five key on the number pad. And I'll click on two main axis to get a local axis. Hit the escape key twice to drop the gizmo in the selection. We'll go back to close spline. If you are clicking and you are not seeing anything, make sure you check your curves tree and ensure that items is not hidden. I'll just delete all those existing curves while I'm at it. I don't need them. In the Curves menu, we can check Snap to Surface. I'll pause for just a moment while I click on Color Palette so that I can see my reference image. And I'll hit Escape to finish creating that first curve. And then I'm going to click very close to that. Let's hit the Q key, and I'm going to choose Edit to Spline. I'm going to put that very close because if I have it too far away when I try to use the swept in generator, you may end up having an issue with your preview mesh. I can spin around and see that that worked very well. I can go ahead and hide this plane, but I need to refresh the sculpt mesh, so I'll just uncheck it and then check it again. Now I'll go to the curve editor and click on the B spline in order to create a few more curves. When I click on that first point, as I come around, it's going to create a closed path. Now I'm going to create another one that's going to be about midway along the length of the ear. But this time I'm going to sketch it on top of the rhino itself because it's already facing the direction that I want it to. So I'll hit the Q key again and it points. What I want to do at this point is to select the entire curve and transform it using the transform tool. But first I need to select it. I'll just select it from the curves tree. Then I'll choose the transform tool and move it into place. All right. I think that'll be good enough. So let's hit escape. And now we have four curves that we can use for our swept generator. I'll click on that. Pick the first guide. I'll come over here and pick that. Second, pick that one. And then the first profile, I'll click this one. Let's see, it appears to be rotated the wrong direction, but that's okay. We can change the orientation here in just a moment. So the second one, let's go ahead and pick that one. 
Uh, let's make that 100. Okay. Okay, and um, turn that quantity not up. It's very dense. I have a lot of spans here, so let's bring that down to 10 and 10. Let's just go ahead and uncheck quantity not. Before I commit this preview object to a mesh, I want to adjust the base here by modifying the position of the points because the first curve is a bit shorter than the other, and that is why it does not fit as flush as I want it to. Hit the Q key and select Edit Points Mode. I will click that point and move it over the top of the point on this other curve. And I will do the same thing here, but I'm going to reduce my brush size. And that should suffice. Before I commit this to a layer, I want to create a new blank layer because I want the option to be able to hide this ear as I make adjustments to the body mesh. I will later merge the two layers together. So let's go ahead and create a new layer here and I'll hit apply mesh. We can hide these curves as we don't need them at the moment. Now let's hide the ear. One thing I do want to point out at this stage is me personally, I would try and create a voxel object so that I can preserve the overall shape as I modify the topology. So if I go through with a brush tool and try to relax some of these edge loops, then I know that it's not going to change the shape as long as I have auto snap checked. I'm also going to move this ear mesh to where it's centered right over this vertex. Let's go to the select tool. I can step out of the curves because again, I don't need them anymore. So from the E panel, I'll choose a regular brush draw mode and then I'll choose faces selection mode. Double click to select all the contiguous faces. And right click, choose transform. Let's move that up just a bit because we're going to use the bridge tool. And I want there to be a nice seamless transition between the body mesh and the ear. So I'll hit escape twice. Now let's go ahead and hide the ear. I'll go to the body layer in the select tool and faces mode. I'll just drag select these faces, right click and choose inset. Now, before I make any more edits to the modeling mesh, I want to create a voxel object in order to preserve the current volume while I make changes to the topology. I want to hide all these other objects. Next, I want to go to this list menu in the upper left corner, and I want to turn off colored UV islands. This removes all transparency of the modeling mesh, which is what I want at the moment to make it easier to see. We'll go to the scope workspace. I'll create a new blank sculpture layer, and then go to the geometry menu and choose retopo mesh to sculpt mesh. Let's hit the W key to turn on wireframe. I'll now click the increase resolution icon at the bottom of the sculpture panel in order to smooth it a bit. And I may change the name just to make it a little bit easier to distinguish from the other layers. With our sculpt object created, we can now return to the modeling room. I'll select the brush tool and enable auto snapping. Now that I have a sculpt object beneath it, I think I've changed my mind and want to go back and check colored UV islands to make it semi-transparent once again. Hit the W key to turn wireframe off. I can adjust the opacity of the retopo mesh. I'll use the brush tool to make a few tweaks. Go to select mode, faces mode, select those faces, and then hit the delete key to delete those. Then unhide the ear layer, go to faces mode, escape, double click on those faces. And I want to move them to the body layer because I'm now ready to merge these together. With those selected, I'll go to the body layer and then click move to the currently selected layer. Now I can delete that layer. Let's hit escape, go to edges mode, 
shift click to select the edge loop, reduce my brush size so I don't select too many edges, and then shift click once again. Now let's right click and choose bridge. We don't have to have a perfect matching number. 3D Coat will go ahead and try and create triangles where we need it. If we need, we can adjust the twist and we can adjust the number of segments in between. I think that'll be fun. We can also adjust the convex or concave values of the geometry in between of the bridge. And I'll hit OK. With symmetry enabled, I'm going to click the Apply Symmetry icon. And that will conclude this series on the new modeling tools in 3D Coat 2021. Thank you for watching, and we will see you next time.